Welcome back. This is CC Cycle 2 and Week 10 Memory Work Ideas and Homeschool Ideas. For math this week, we are skip counting the squares. And so what we will do as we sing the song for skip counting is we will have each of the kids take turns putting an actual square around a few of the numbers on our board. And uh, when we get to those numbers as we're skip counting, we will jump or hop or skip or turn around or whatever the kids choose on their colored square. So I'll just give each of the kids a different color to use. And then when we get to that color square, we know that uh, what each person chose. You could simplify it and just have them put a square all in the same color. And when you get to the square, you always jump. Um, and that way you get some action and some motion and you get things excited from the get go. Okay, for English, we're moving on to the demonstrative pronouns. And they are this, that, these, and those. And so when we sing this in the song, we clap. So it's the end of the song, and it sounds like this. Demonstrative, this, that, these, those. And that wraps up all of our pronouns. It would be really fun, since we're wrapping up all of these pronouns that we've learned for the last six weeks, to take a minute in class or at home and turn on the chicken dance song, play an instrumental version. I can link the one that we use below in the description, but turn it on and get everyone together and, and actually go through the entire chicken jam dance song, starting with the nominative pronouns all the way through the demonstrative. And then you see how much you've learned all to one song. And it's fun to wrap it up by having a little bit of a dance party session, sort of. Okay, for history, we're learning about Russia. We're gonna do motions as usual. However, the song does move pretty fast and so, one of the things that I do notice in the song that just naturally makes me want to move to it is that it kind of has a particular beat where it sounds like you could stomp your foot and clap, stomp your foot and clap. So if the motions you find that they're too fast or maybe too difficult for your class, you could just sing the whole history song just while you stomp and clap, stomp and clap, stomp and clap, and just do that the whole way through as you sing the words. However, if you would like some motions, this is what we did. So we have Vladimir, V for Vladimir the first, you shake your hand like this, brought Christianity to Russia. The sign for Russia is to go under your neck and down. So Russia in the 900s. Okay, C stands for century for hundred. Then we have in the 1500s, you just take your five hand and wave it towards yourself. So in the 1500s, Sar Ivan, you could put an, an I, it kind of moves fast, but you might need to move just to the terrible. So Sar Ivan the terrible unified Russia. Okay, the next is P for Peter, Peter the Great and Catherine the Great expanded. So just move your hands out for expanded and a W for West for and westernized Russia and again, Russia. Uh, in the 17, you just take a seven and kind of shake it like that. In the 1700s. You don't have to do the C, you could just do this for 17. So all together, that is Vladimir the first brought Christianity to Russia in the 900s. In the 1500s, Tsar Ivan the Terrible unified Russia, then P for Peter the Great, and Catherine the Great expanded and westernized Russia in the 1700s. And those are all the motions. For Latin, we are going to take out our blue ram again to remind us that it is pluperfect tense, and the first sound is aram. For a timeline, we have Japan's hand period. So we're going to move our hands like the shape of Japan, so Japan's Heian period. This symbolizes they had a similar class arrangement for classes in society as like feudalism in Europe. And so we're just going to do the same sign like that to just represent the different classes in society. So Japan's Heian period. Then we have Charlemagne, crowned emperor of Europe. 
So we're just going to do a C and then put a big crown for crown emperor of Europe. Then we have Alfred the Great of England. So we're going to do an A for Alfred. When we say the great, we raise the roof like we're saying something's great or awesome or wonderful. So Alfred the Great of England. We take our hands like this and shake it. This is what we do for England. Then we have Eric the Red and Leif Erikson. So for Eric the Red, we're going to point to our lips and you kind of do it twice, just showing uh, the color of your lips like red. And then Leif Erikson is Eric the Red's son. So we're going to make our hands like we're rocking a baby. Uh, for Leif Erikson, Norse Explorers. So when we do that, we just put our hands out like we're explorers. Then we have Vladimir, a V for Vladimir, the first of Kiev. So we're going to make a K. This instead of a downward facing P, it's the same motion, but up. So K for Kiev. Then we have Byzantine Emperor Basil the second. And then we have East-West Schism of the Church. And for that, we just do the motion. East-West Schism. So it's referring back to when the church split. So East-West Schism of the Church. And that is all of our timeline. For geography this week, we are learning about Southwest Asia. So I thought it would be fun the first year that we went through cycle two to bring in some spices and kind of the smell and the sound of this area. And so... Um, I'll bring in some cumin, coriander, and curries, things like that, and let the children smell those. And then while we review geography, I will just put on some Southwest Asian style music. Uh, in that area, there's a lot of the sitar. And so I found a song just on Spotify that has some playing of the sitar. The song that we'll play is Dadra, I think, D-A-D-R-A. -A. Um, and we'll just play that while we point and go through all of geography as usual. So as we point to Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Kolkata, and the Arabian Sea, that music will just be in the background as I show them, then they show me, then they tell me, and we go back and forth. So that's how we'll do geography, just with the spices and the sound of Southwest Asia. And then for science, we're learning what are the names of the planets. So for this, we have motions and a song. You can do either or. But for the motions, I learned this from uh, YouTube years ago during our first cycle two from Nicole Dragu on YouTube. And uh, the motions go like this. So we have number one is Mercury. Number two is also Venus, okay? Number three is Earth, so we turn it to the side like an E. Number four is Mars, so we turn it upside down like an M. It kind of looks like a capital M. Then we have five is Jupiter, and for five we put it around because Jupiter is the big planet. So for five we go like this, five. And then for um, Saturn, that's number six, we take that sixth finger over here and we loop it around like the rings of Saturn. And then for Uranus, we have number seven. So we show this and then we take these hands and we cover them up because Uranus is really cold. And then for Neptune, we do two hands showing four for the number eight. And then we kind of go like this because it's really windy there. So uh, the song that I put it to is Star Wars because that just makes me think of space and planets and all those things. And so it sounds like this. What are the names of the planets? The names of the planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And all together with the motions, that looks like this. What are the names of the planets? The names of the planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And that's how we do science. All right, for a review this week, I think we are going to do, do some hands-on playing with Play-Doh as we go through as much of the review questions as we can. So each of the kids will have their own uh, container of Play-Doh and I will let them create, design, form, and have fun as we review as a group all of the different review that we can get through up through week 10. 
So that is how we'll do review. And then moving on to some things that we will do at home this week. For devotions this week in our indescribable book, we have lots that you could choose from uh, based on what we are learning this week. If you want to talk about pollution, which we talk about in science this week, it would be page 200. And that is a great devotion. There's also page 117, page 54, 160, and 172. And that's only on earth. Uh, so those are five different devotions that you could read during week 10 out of Indescribable that would be applicable. For a read aloud, it would be great to read Who Was Leif Erikson. This is part of our timeline, and so that would be appropriate. Some other read alouds that you could do, obviously, as the old world echoes. Always a reminder of that for week 10. And then you could also do the Usborne Look Inside this is a book that I've shown before on one of my videos, but this is great for learning about space. It's got all of the different tabs that you can open about the sun, and then it even has more openings for showing all the planets, and I, I don't even have this all the way open, but it's huge, and it shows the whole solar system, so this would be a great book to break out for this week, just because space and the planets. So those are just a couple of read alouds. You could go to the library. Some of the ones that I have on a list here are the solar system out of this world with science activities for kids. Then we have comets, stars, the moon, and Mars. Those are um, space poems and paintings. So that could be kind of cool. You can't ride a bicycle to the moon, discover our solar system, the first big book of space, the cat in the hat, they have a book called There's No Place Like Space, The Cat in the Hat. Uh, you probably find that online too. And those would all be great books to check out this week. And then for Magic School Bus, there is Lost in the Solar System and Out of This World and Sea Stars. So Cat in the Hat also has one. It's called The Planet Name Game. And that's season two, episode 12 for Cat in the Hat. Bill Nye, of course. And then PBS Kids also has... Um, some games about the planets, and so does Magic School Bus. If you go to magicschoolbus.com, there's a game on there for planets as well. So that is a lot of information and resources for this week. If you are interested in doing Eat Your Geography, uh, History, or Science this week, you could do curry and flatbread. Uh, speaking of the spices that I'm bringing in for geography, curry would be an awesome option to try out this week with your family. If you wanted to focus more for Russia, you could do Russian tea cakes, pierogi, or vitruska. So that would be fun if you want to do history focus. And then if you wanted to focus on science, you could do like a solar fruit tray, cake pops, or cupcakes that are all about the solar system. So those are some fun ideas for this week. I hope that that is helpful, and I hope that I'm covering everything. If not, I will link information in the description. But that is all for this week, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week for week 11.